Welcome to the upstreamlife.com. I always love talking to great founders. I like talking to people who fund these founders. I've got with me Mitesh Shah, who's the, the co-founder or the founder of IP Ventures or IPV, as we all know them. And they've funded so many more startups, more than 250. And, uh, you know, they, he's, Mitesh is going to tell us some great names that they funded. Mitesh, quickly, IPV, how old is it today? And uh, how is it uh, that it became so famous? Let's start with the history. Well, we are five years old, uh, you know, right from inception. Uh, but we started more like a bootstrap entity, you know, in our own way, as we call our startups. So we ourselves were bootstrap in a way where we are in a full-time job uh, and thought about kind of making a change to early stage ecosystem. And that's where we started it, uh, like a weekend passion project. Well, me and my co-founders, Vinay and Amkur, were in our full-time job. Uh, we said that I think while uh, the early stage ecosystem is is growing and looking promising, there are a lot of things that need fix, right? And that's how it was born out of our passion to work closely with the founders and uh, change the outcome uh, of early stage investment. Mind you, even today, it's perceived as, you know, a, a one out of 10 sort of a success rate as a class. In our case, it is almost five out of 10, just because of the way kind of you execute your investment uh, and you nurture them post investment. So that was the whole thought process when we started, you know, back in 2018, 19. Uh, just around COVID time, then we all moved full time into this, looking at a year of our progress, uh, the way our membership base, you know, our, our friends who kind of joined us initially believed in our idea, just about a small group of 50. Eventually, within a year, it moved up to about 700. Right. So we thought that I think what we were trying to do both for the investors as well as founders uh, was validated. Uh, both of them actually kind of accepted the value prop very well. And that's how we grew. And uh, I mean, that kind of gave us more conviction around 2000. 1920, we moved full time into this, and yeah, rest, as we all know, uh, what started as an angel investment platform today, we are, uh, you know, an angel investment ecosystem uh, with two SEBI registered AIFs, uh, 200 plus entities already funded, and about uh, 100 million dollars of investment already done. What people don't realize is, uh, I think, what you've raised capital close 100 crores for startups, right? More than 100, I think, at this point of time. Uh, the interesting aspect is you have you you start you started your early career with the whole art, didn't it? I mean, in a sense, you were you were one of the angel investors at that point of time, and uh, and that's how this bug of uh, becoming a a platform or a fund started with you, right? So interesting story, and thanks for asking this, Vishal. Uh, you know, started my journey as a CFO for a for a textile company. Worked with that company for almost twelve years. Uh, you know, got pretty hands-on and amazing experience of uh, leading the IPO for a company uh, at an age of 28, right? So was very lucky to be the right place at the right time and uh, the way the company was growing. So gave me great insight. Uh, you know, worked with, you know, one of the largest consumer story again in India, being human clothing. Uh, you know, that kind of gave me an, uh, an, an idea into uh, the digital world, right? Uh, where we used to deal with uh, the internet e-commerce platforms. And that got me intrigued about the overall digital economy, right? Internet economy, as you call it today. Uh, 2013, end of 2013, uh, somebody uh, connected me with uh, Bhavish Agarwal, founder of Ola. And I think that was uh, the moment, uh, you know, in my life, uh, in my professional life, as I joined Ola as a, uh, as a CFO around end of 2013. And the three years that I was there with Ola, that kind of gave me a lot of further insight into being on the other side of the table representing a founding team, a, a startup which was changing the way, you know, people consume, uh, you know, point to point travel in India today, right? Uh, all the concepts were, you know, totally outdated. People will wait for caps for a long time and all. And here's a startup which kind of tell you that I'll give you the comfort of, you know, uh, hailing a ride uh, at the fingertip uh, of the app. Right. So uh, it wasn't easy uh, when we initially started, obviously, a lot of uh, you know, belief needs to be generated in the ecosystem with both the suppliers, which is driver in this case, and even the customer, which is the passenger in this case, right? People like us. Uh, but I think great experience, great learning. And that actually prompted me to, you know, support uh, these early stage founders uh, who are there who set out to kind of disrupt uh, the way things are consumed, the way uh, things are looked at, the way businesses are built. Right, uh, the new age way of doing things, and uh, that's when I started my own journey as an angel investor. Uh, again, the the idea was not only wealth creation, uh, but it's about being associated with the ecosystem a little deeper. 
uh, when you see the problem from their perspective, when you see the solution that they are implementing from their perspective, uh, suddenly uh, your thinking kind of opens up. And and I saw that in myself. I think within that three-year stint, you know, at Ola, uh, I started my journey as an angel. And the way I could then conceptualize problems, the the statement, the solutions, and value proposition, uh, I I could see that change in myself. And that's what get got me excited. That I think as an angel, uh, my job is not only to put that initial check uh, with the founder, but also help them in more than one ways. I mean, capital is just you know probably twenty five percent of the problem. Seventy five percent is how do you deploy that capital? How do you execute your ideas? Right? As today also we say that ideas are dime a dozen. It's about execution, execution, execution. Uh, so I mean that was my journey. I started in two thousand fourteen as an angel when I made my first investment. uh into one of my you know friends entity uh who was my ex colleague uh, at my first job and he came up with this idea of peer to peer lending which was hitherto an unknown concept in india uh, right uh, uh, let aside the regulatory challenges that it was facing i think as a concept itself uh, you know it was it was so path breaking that the, the mainstream investors were just not ready to kind of back it but it was about belief in that person that i had worked with and that's how my journey as an you know angel started where i uh, supported him initially not only with the check but also with connects guidance and governance uh, so so that was my journey as an angel where the idea was again to say that okay this is an ecosystem where you can bring about a change where you can create and support entrepreneurship uh, and bring other like minded people as an investor also uh, in in the journey because as an individual i'll not only have limited financial muscle but also limited bandwidth to support startups and that's how these seeds were sown for inflection point venture as a platform that's when i met vinay and ankur who were also doing something similar and yes then ipv started you know i'm glad you reminded me of inflection point ventures because uh, i hadn't used that name in a long time you are known as ipv you know if somebody says <laughs> ipv that's a good problem to have because think about it not many people know that you also cut early check to dream 11 if i'm correct no 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 we it was it wasn't dream 11 Uh, we cut early check uh, to Bharat Pay. Uh huh. Okay. Right. What are the and, other uh, other well-known the, names? So we have been early stage investors uh, into into Bharat Pay, into Blue Smart, uh, into Vested, which is an investment into like overseas investment platform, uh, into OTP, uh, into Milk Basket, right? And the list goes on. Uh, yeah. You know, OTP. Pascare, I've done a podcast with you. Pascal. Pascal is doing well. Of course. So you've you've done. You've not had a. You're very agnostic. You just said let's lo- support entrepreneurs, right? Right. You. Yeah. So right from beginning. Thing. Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah, Vishal. So right from beginning, the concept has been very, very clear that uh, you know when you are supporting ideas at an early stage. I mean, we uh, we enter into businesses or we support ideas when they are not even pre-revenue, but they are pre-product also in a lot of these cases, right? So. never shy away from taking bet uh, you know into ideas where uh, the proof of concept is not fully there yet but that's where the fun of kind of helping them and supporting them see them grow right i mean uh, not only it's the business that you help create uh, but in the process even the financial returns that you can see right? it's a simple rule of compounding right i invest in a startup at a valuation of 5 crore you invest at a valuation of 20 crore the same startup when it reaches a valuation of 100 crores i'll be at 20x you'll be at 5x right so it's just that coming in one stage or two stage early that helps me kind of reap the rewards of it of course risk is high uh, but that's what we are that we understand how this journey of 0 to 1 right so i think there is no point being uh, a sector specific you know theme based fund over here uh, the winners can be found across all the sectors we believe there is no sector which is so bad that you can't even find uh, you know couple of winners over there likewise there is no sector which is so good that everybody will be a hit in that right so i think we are a large country i think what gives us this belief and faith is uh, uh, the domestic consumption story of india itself right uh, 140 crore we are but uh, predominantly youth the digital consumption is growing leaps and bounds right internet penetration uh, crossing almost touching almost 900 million smartphone penetration is cross 500 million the way rural consumption is kind of coming up uh, digital users not only in form of product but services like content so i think it's this Uh, the shift in consumerism that we are seeing that kind of gives us this belief that there are lot many problems which are yet to be solved 
or and sold to be sold in a different yeah. way and the more thing about you way. is a lot of professionals who have grown wealthy over the years in india can come through you and start investing in startups you know oh, yes i think yeah. i think that's the that's the ethos of the platform uh, and that's what we take pride about to where we can help our founders so our proposition is very simple uh, before we entered the scene or when we started our journey as an individual angel investor i think angel investing was made out to be a profession or a field only for the rich right that okay i mean if you are ultra rich or hni or a family office then only this is for you because it's very high risk you never know when the money will come back even if it will come back or no right and and there is no sort of uniformity over here uh, you know play safe either do you know bank investment mutual fund investment fds or at the most public market because there is liquidity and we felt that i think there has to be a way where the participation can be large based uh, again the more the number of angels today as an ecosystem while india is number 5 you know in terms of gdp uh, you know the powerful economies of the world uh, in in terms of number of angel investors when we compare with the number of angel investors in us or or china uh, right or or even let's say in israel or uk for that matter i think we'll still are kind of looking at very early days so the concept thanks to you know uh, you know ecosystems like us or even let's say television shows like shark tank is now gaining popularity but there are still a lot of myths around it like i said right so our concept or our uh, vision right from beginning was that okay you know angel investing is for everyone if you are a corporate professional please do come join us and while investment may happen later but this is your chance to a learn from the ecosystem understand the way digital businesses are being driven and contribute to the growth of that as well right so people can come in and invest as small as 1 lakh also with us and start in a small way and then kind of pick up as your risk appetite increases or your own on disposable uh, surplus to invest into startups can increase right but uh, it's basically this change that we have brought about which have helped us cultivate a large base of investors right who are active investors uh, by far angel investing is an active form of investing and not passive unlike public markets right and absolutely. that's where i think founder gets a lot of help absolutely and and the fact that uh, you know startup investment will be mainstream a lot of people keep asking me uh especially the hni is they keep asking me whether startups are still the flavor but i would say it's going to be forever flavor for in india it's going to be there forever right and uh, they have what portion of their uh, you know resource finance resource should they allocate to investing in startups if you may advise so i uh, i think there is no tailor made approach for one right uh, but to your first point i think uh, we are just scratching the surface yet uh, yes. we are in 2024 uh mark my words i think this decade is going to be of india as everyone knows uh, but this decade is going to be of startups multiple reasons uh, the way we are uh, positioned right now you know in the global economy uh, the way government has been taking proactive steps in promoting startups uh, the way even uh, mainstream corporates large business houses uh, you know uh, overseas investors uh and conglomerates are taking note of startup participating with them working closely with them partnering with them right so everybody understand that this ecosystem is is robust is going to grow right it is getting the desired capital also it is getting the desired talent also right gone are the days when uh, you know people from large established corporates uh, will be skeptical to move to a new young time startup or first time startup right everybody in fact wants to now join startups and experience the exuberance experience the fun of building something new so that shift that i have seen in last decade of journey of my my own journey as an angel investor from 2014 to now to 2024 that gives me a lot of belief and faith in the further growth that startup ecosystem has to offer uh, to all of us right and uh, to second part i think in terms of the disposable income that you can allocate to this it can range from you know 10% going up to you know as i is in our case maybe 40% right uh, so there is no fixed ratio uh, what is important here to note vishal is that uh, how good you are able to kind of churn it and that's where i think the most important equation in the entire scheme of thing is that are you able to create enough exit opportunities right uh, as an individual i'll have very limited options i can't move need the needle but that's where i think ipv comes into picture where we are able to kind of help the founder to create next round of funding for themselves uh, help the startup grow same in the process create an exit also for investors uh, you know uh, in the next round of funding uh, I, I, i would definitely i would definitely follow your route because a lot of people today 
uh, go to startups individually and invest and they often burn their fingers because there's no due diligence right and your team brings the entire gamut uh, let's stick to that question right if you if a young family office say somebody who's made first time wealth who's got about 30 crores in the bank says i want to be part of this uh, what are some things that you get apart from the beauty of 250 startups uh, you, you give them a professional approach right uh, there's a minimum buy in like sir said like mitesh said is you can join in as little as 1 lakh but there is an entire process to this right mitesh totally totally i think uh, so we put it broadly into three phases the pre investment phase the investment phase and the post investment right so in the pre investment phase uh, with our ability to kind of attract good ideas good founders uh, who who know that they are going to benefit uh, with our capital because it's not just dumb capital it gives them access to so many other things uh, we on an average look at close to 700 new ideas every month right and out of that after five layers of filtering which is through our uh, you know expert panel which is through our own team uh, ourselves as founders our own investors who are the lps who again are this base of uh, you know corporate professionals uh, and cxos uh, right and finally deep due diligence uh, we are able to kind of pin down to about four or five startups every month where we finally kind of invest right so this is the sort of filtering which kind of uh, improves the success rate by itself right so this is just not going by an idea and saying that okay i should invest into this because the founder is iit iim or i should invest into this because founder is third time entrepreneur right while these are all good precedents to have they by itself cannot be an investment thesis and that's why i think our insistence on a good strong due diligence mind you you are investing into ideas like i said which are which doesn't have a financial pnl because they are just starting up they don't even have a product so your diligence has to be really different your diligence has to be focused on the founding team it has to be focused on the potential of the business idea focused on tam right and focused on lot of other things which is more forward looking than kind of doing a post mortem of what has already happened in the past right so that's where the, i think secret sauce lies that the due diligence is the most important aspect over here which can then tell vishal as an investor that okay look the idea is great right but you may kind of want to consider these facts also over here or vice versa the idea today may not be looking so interesting because it's very early stage but it has a huge potential right and the risk reward ratio is something that you may want to consider and go for this so i think this, this is lacking in the ecosystem today and that's what we kind of try to bridge the gap that provide suitable assistance to investors to take a much more informed call then comes the investment phase where you help them kind of negotiate through their rights you know which is the very crucial thing about shareholder agreement and the, the other legal aspects right and support balance it out with founders rights as well and you know founders expectation from investors also finally uh, the the game changer which is the most important part is post investment support now here's where founder actually not only gets capital from us but also gets support and help from our wide base of 14000 plus investors who are all spread across different countries different geographies spread across almost 55 plus countries right so any connect any help any industry that you name it and we shall be able to provide uh you know uh, within within the ecosystem itself and this is where like i said the outcome can change so as compared to uh, or or con- contrary to the popular belief that, that uh, the mortality rate here is 90% only 10% succeed you can definitely improve it like us in where we are our success rate too is almost like 50% it's interesting the the reason i bought a dream 11 uh, earlier ladies and gentlemen is because they sold a company to dream 11 it is my bad i think there was an exit right i don't know what the, i don't remember the name of the startup uh, but uh, there was one deal oh yes dream yes i think uh, yeah so a very early stage idea which was into esports esports yeah. uh, was the flavor of the season uh, and like i said the kind of ideas that we believe in early on a lot of them have eventually then been acquired by a large behemoths like dream 11 uh, like so strong uh, yeah. reliance and 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 lot of other things right so i think this is the overall ecosystem that we create this is the overall nurturing that we provide uh, and drive it forward right and that's where uh, the exit that we are able to provide to investors is just not then dependent on vcs coming in well a lot of our startups get funded by vcs and that's where you get exit but even beyond that even strategic investors are interested like so in this case this entity called so strong which was into esports right uh, uh, you know dream 11 uh we knew the team uh, and we were just kind of showcasing portfolio to them and they really loved the idea and that's how the acquisition happened it is really nice because sometimes the startup 
product may not be able to scale uh, because of go-to-market reasons at that point of time. But the technology would be so interesting that large companies can still come take over, right? That's an opportunity for founders as well, right? That uh, you're going to go all out to say, look, we, we are not, if you're great founders, if you build great product, we're not going to let you fail. We are going to make sure that there's somebody who comes and appreciates you and also buys you out at some point of time. That's a, that's a good strategy as well, right? Rather than saying we can create a great startup individually. And I'm sure some, some founders do struggle with go-to-market. And that's where you got probably bring in a buyer and make their life easier as well. Well, totally. I think, uh, I think like you said, a lot of founders uh, are able to create, execute well, create a great product. Uh, but tying up with a large uh, multinational, a large corporate or a, or a large strategic player definitely gives them wings, right? It can reduce their go-to-market time. Uh, it can reduce their uh, approach to some of the markets which they individually probably would take ages to kind of reach out to. Uh, here, they can provide them a lot of benefits firsthand. Right? And hence, it's a it's it's a win-win for both. Because for the, for the corporate, this means that they are getting a team of nimble guys who are able to think, you know, beyond boundaries, right? Uh, cut through the chase and actually kind of implement an idea much faster. And with their set distribution channels, their set markets, they are able to kind of provide them that exposure. Right. So I think this is a model which is now proven, uh, you know, so far in our history of the 190 plus investments that we have done, uh, we've already seen, uh, you know, close to 40 exits, right. And uh, almost uh, 13 out of this have been full exits where uh, it has been through an m and where the, the, the entity has been acquired by somebody else. Now, this is the proof that a lot of these startups ideas are something which uh, strategic players are also interested in. And it's, uh, uh, it's, it's great for the founders also, because they get a home where they can prosper. Yeah, uh, they can actually and prosper. prosper. And nothing wrong with that. If founders are listening in, you shouldn't treat that as a failure. It's another great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And Vishal, you'll be surprised that the reasons for these acquisitions are not only because the startup is doing extremely well or they are, the product is being sold very well or the revenues are great. Uh, it can be done at all stages. Uh, acquisitions are done uh, just because they like the product. Acquisitions are done just because they like the founding team, right? Uh, these can also be done in the nature of acquihire. So possibilities are amazing. Possibilities are, are humongous, right? Um, and it's not just slaves of, like I said, a PNL where you only rely on, you know, how profitable business that you are running. Uh, here, it's more about the disruption aspect or uh, the reduction in go-to-market timing for the corporate or for the acquirer that we are able to give them with our startups. Okay. You said flavor of the month. Uh, those, I mean, those days it was esports and uh, AI, and now it's moved on to generative AI. What are some of the flavors uh, today? I mean, I know last year and I mean, lot of, I mean, a lot of people said that the follow-on rounds were not happening, but I thought angel activity was really strong. I think the deal flow in terms of good startups and good valuation was getting more real realistic, correct, uh, Mitesh? Uh, so what is the flavor and also the fact that if somebody came and said, you know, hey, funding has slowed down, I think they must be kidding you. I mean, it's only the fact that there are better valuations out there, in a sense, normal valuations rather than bloated ones. Well, I always say this. I think uh, funding winter is a term coined by, you know, us investors only just to kind of get great deals in the market. Uh, I think for, for good ideas, for good founding teams, there is no dearth of capital, right? And uh, uh, we, in fact, see this as an opportunity. Like as as Mr. Warren Buffett, the greatest investor ever, he always say that when, when others are greedy, be fearful. When others are fearful, be greedy, right? So this is our time to be greedy. In fact, last year, we already seen now, you know, green shoots coming in in last two quarters, right? So I think I think for great ideas, for great founders, you know, always back them. It doesn't really matter how's the external environment because they will grow. They will grow when the tides will turn, or even they will be uh, they will be strong enough to build, you know, a fundamentally sustainable business. Their growth uh, should not be only dependent on VC money or investors' money, right? And these are the ideas that we love the most. Right? So, and and that's how that's how we have also grown over the years. So, I think we have been fairly active, uh, you know, right in the last two years when the so-called funding winter was at its peak. And currently changing now in terms of sector, while we continue to be sector agnostic, uh, there are certain areas that we, we really like, we absolutely love. Uh, clean tech, climate tech, uh, you know, even within fintech, something like insurance tech and all, 
I think uh, the sector is going through a, a, a huge change because yeah, you change. Of, the, it's funny, right? That sector is just going. It's the only sector that's going through a lot of change. I think. Yeah, I mean because uh, the 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 digital market is just a five percent of the total market. You know, uh, people still kind of go to an insurance agent and does it offline. Now this this is ripe for disruption, right? And uh, so 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 many more such sectors and all, uh, right? Uh, we we like uh, uh, deep tech yeah. we like deep enterprise tech yeah. yeah d2c so, uh, d2c uh, I, I, our thesis is that it rather has to be a, a brand than d2c d2c is a channel d2c cannot be a store in itself right so it, if it's a good consumer brand d2c can be a good channel it has to be a good b2c business uh, and the channel can be d2c channel can be offline channel can be modern trade and lot of others right that doesn't matter but I think it has to be a proper mix of online and offline both, right? So uh, if it's a great brand, again consumption story will continue to rise. Do you think deep tech you'd recommend to uh, all your investors in the network uh, because all of them understand money very well and deep tech is a ten-year story. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I'll not say it is a ten-year story. Yeah, you need to be patient uh, with deep tech. I think the first phase is where you are able to kind of roll out a robust product, right? Uh, Which which continuously learns, uh, it, it's never static. It will always be kind of open to kind of much more algorithms and changes, uh, which takes into account a lot of other data points as well. Uh, the difficult part here, where a lot of founders don't get it right, is monetization. All right? Uh, unlike yeah, absolutely B, right, because unlike you're so much in the model, science, you're in the correct. science. You get lost in the as the market suddenly changes. and you can't buy growth just having yeah. capital will not kind of help you sustain uh, this is unlike a consumer business where you can spend uh, on performance marketing get some initial growth which will not sustain because the retention rates are poor here you are selling to a large corporate a b2b sort of a business where your product has to make sense your product will speak for itself right and if you are strong in your offering uh, then the sustaining the, the retention will come by itself So then, I think there is no looking back. The revenues will continue to grow. We have invested in a lot of such businesses, which have grown pretty fast. We have got exit, like I said, uh, being in business for all about, you know, on an average, say three years. Our investment portfolio of two and a half and three years, already having seen forty exits, at least forty percent of them are in B two B businesses. Right. So I think if the cycle runs well, if the founding team understands the importance of having, uh, you know, a good balance of, you know, proper sales team also in there. organizational mix then you can have a winner on your hand pretty early and you said enterprise saas that's played out for 15 years now i think india has really cracked it do you see that happening again or do you see do you think the saas story is uh, you know i know the, the i know the network keeps coming out with uh, great reports saying saas is here to stay you know the saas boomy network keeps doing it uh, my my logic is uh, do we still have the edge and uh, I, i know in india in terms of number of saas ideas will be plenty what i mean is it is vertical saas more important in enterprise oh uh, i i think definitely we have the edge we have the talent we have the market ourselves right uh, what businesses need to understand is that uh, there has to be a sweet spot in terms of pricing as well do not overestimate or underestimate your own product right do not kind of price it so high or do not kind of price it for free also that people lose value around it uh, and that's where i think again you know time and again i say that i think it's it's not as much as about uh, building a great product yes that is important but at some level it is then more of a hygiene because you will be competing with probably technically superior foreign products as well uh, it's your ability to reach out to the right clients provide them the right service approach them well and continuously learn uh, that's where i think it's going to make a differentiation uh, so yes as definitely as a sector is here to stay i think it will require some more innovative approaches uh, and and you need to think globally very very important that you don't see global players as threat right in fact you should be able to kind of go and explore in their markets as well as much as kind of you look at your own home market you know i have two questions here uh, why haven't you as a network also started debt a lot of guys would want to have uh, <laughs> debt right i mean it's it's true i mean Come on! I mean, you guys have the professional network. You could uh, raise debt if they wanted. So, Vishal, we strongly believe that uh, uh, there is no point kind of trying to do everything. Uh, rather, consolidate 
grow well understand the ecosystem give justice to it then move to the next one uh, so while we never say never i am not going to say that we'll not do debt ever uh, but i think there is so much to do within equity itself we started with you know ipv the platform then first port capital our angel ai kind of came into picture uh, which is one of the country's largest ai now in terms of size uh, we set up fisis capital last year where fisis supports uh, you know our portfolio winners as well as uh, the other uh, attractive investments across series a series b so while we covered the entire gamut from let's say seed stage uh, to series b i think what was lacking was the first step where we identify the ideas and catch them young and that's where we introduce idea school this year so idea school is our effort to kind of catch the startups at a pre seed stage or let's say we replace the friends and family around itself right so we are now relevant across the entire value chain for the founder yeah if you are a founder who's willing to put in you know hard work and and execute well uh, we will be able to support you right from pre seed to series b everything in house and with our vc partners in fact help you raise even a larger round and the new fund on the way you know from your network you 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 are going to announce a new fund very soon i think or you already have so idea school is uh, you know is is part of uh, the angel if itself where we'll be investing into uh, pre seed stage ideas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have shortlisted our top 5 and very soon we are going to announce that also so this is okay. the this is the first batch of idea school and in a year we'll have two such batches is there a fund right. size for this is still open we are we are open i think for great ideas there is no fund like i like i said this is part of the overall 100 million plus uh, first port capital which is our mm-hmm. angel ai so this is a this is again a part of it also so there is no dearth of capital for great ideas over here in the first batch we are funding five startups in the next batch we'll look at again funding five startups and then eventually we'll have two batches a year right so, so that's how so we are 100k is uh, 100k is a normal start or would you say that's a lot correct. more that's correct yes yeah. yes so idea is that come early do not mm-hmm. matter if you don't have product or revenue and all if we like the idea we are there to back you uh, we'll give you you know 100k capital for uh, 8% stake into your company so we don't want to dilute you also overtly but continue to support you to grow uh, and reduce your go to market timing reduce your timing to raise the next round also as the proof of concept and product validation is there right so the that's that what i was saying the mentors in your network for go to market oh yes yes that's what I, i think capital is just one aspect of it as i earlier also said uh, what you need is uh, you know deep understanding of the business uh, building the right business model opening the right doors approaching the right people right and and proper guidance uh, in terms of uh, team building product tech uh, and lot of other factors right including digital marketing and other factors uh, and then next round of funding is also something that we can take care of in house itself so this is what idea school is about uh, like i said That's idea it. school so it's going to be an entering entire mentoring better on the founder kind of platform uh, and uh, obviously you're going to take them to series a b c late a. i mean if they go that long right and also maybe mnas if that makes sense or buyouts corporate buyouts that's that's great so why haven't you guys gone out and uh, announced a big fund of sorts in a sense uh, a series a or series b fund so that is fisis capital series a series b ah, we correct. just set it up now correct. yeah correct. so the, the the first fund uh, is, is something that we have already started as we speak we have already made one investment in, and in the process of closing two further investments over here so yes we are there as well and like i said You know, How big is that fund now? Have oh, so that fund, th- that fund, we have announced the first closure at about twelve uh, million dollar, right? And uh, we shall be closing. Uh, the final close should be there in some time, probably a year, while we have started the deployment as well. But first fund, our idea is to keep it small, uh, grow with it fast. While there is a lot of interest, uh, we just want to focus on the fundamentals first, get the thesis right, build a great portfolio, and then move to fund two. Okay. Right. So, like we always do, kind of make sure that uh, we build a fundamentally sustainable idea and business, right? So, you know, while we have been we proven ourselves with zero to one, this is basically an approach where we take it from one to ten, right? And uh, yeah, we have some great initial feedback that we have got, some some great initial investments that we are looking at, and mm-hmm. we are pretty confident of the entire value chain now with both Idea School and Fisis. Okay. Right? but th- this is great fine and by the way ladies and gentlemen have to appreciate this that this is an india fund it's raised money raised in india and that's the beauty of it and it'll only get larger over time uh what is the average age i mean i i see that today the average age of the investors is 45 plus right in the platform itself uh, do you see a younger audience coming in do you see that happening at all uh, as new indians have made wealth over the last 5 years do you see that happening say 35 30 to 35 people participating 
Oh yes, sir. We shall, in fact, uh, you'll be amazed to know that for us, the average age of investors is, is somewhere in the early thirties only, uh, right? Uh, uh, and and the reason is that so we have a lot of investors who are HNI corporate professional who come in with deep experience. When they come to us, when they look at our value proposition, all they want their son and daughters actually to kind of come and attend our calls, to come and attend and the investment learn the investment thesis, right? So. Uh, this for them is a great university they look at us as not something which is their wealth manager or a platform only for investment but something which is a great uh, teacher right and that's how we have always gone about uh, our, uh, our our business our value proposition is that uh, investment is obviously uh, a great uh, product right but i think it has to be backed by proper knowledge so we emphasize on a lot of master classes we ourselves kind of conduct a lot of master classes Where we clarify the concepts, we clarify the ideas, we lay out emphasis on deep due diligence and other things. So because of this, I think a lot of our audience is quite young, who are young professionals and all, and they want to understand. Probably they don't have exposure to digital economy as much as we have, you know, given their background, let's say with traditional businesses or big fours or banks and others. Uh, but they really want to kind of understand this side of the business as well, and that's what has kind of enabled us to build a fairly young. uh you know batch of investors on the platform no this is good news and it's good news for india if uh, you're listening in i think i think the fact that uh, one mistake you shouldn't make is go try a startup based on a recommendation of a friend uh you know we've all made those mistakes and i i think you should go to a professional platform if you don't understand startup investing and ipv is one of those places inflection point ventures guys um my last question is you know yeah people come into platform mistakes do happen and say the portfolios that they've invested in they're not happy they said oh this failed you know i mean say let's say sectoral edtech was bad you know we all know certain companies didn't do well and people complain and some and maybe there's an agri tech or something people didn't understand it but tried it what do you advise to such hnis or or what is the guarantee for them in a sense that this is risky of course but what guarantees do they get so there is nothing like guarantee in life first of all but i think uh you grow with experience you grow with persistence right i think sorry you're not audible vishal sorry my bad i said i've made such a mistake you know so i do know all that <laughs> no, no, we all do start a big system for 20 years i've still made mistakes by better we all do i think we have made our mistakes and mistakes can be of two types one where we have invested in horrible ideas which have bombed uh second we have passed on some great ideas as well right so there is something called anti portfolio also so you make both sorts of mistake but i think what is important is one uh do investment persistently startup investment is not about just kind of doing two three investments a year building a portfolio of five seven startups and then hoping for magic to happen uh i think you need to do it persistently you need to look at different sector you need to do it actively right just don't like you said just don't rely on my friend vishal telling me that invest in this startup you know and i don't have time to look at it what it does just because vishal has said i'll not invest idea yeah, is to understand absolutely. it myself because absolutely. as you do as you do more study as you do more research as you do more investment your own understanding of uh you know startup world your understanding of businesses your ability to kind of identify the winners uh, in a bunch of other people it significantly improves right so we always say that okay do it the the minimum base that you should look at when you invest in startup is about 25 right uh, but when you do that chances of having winner in your portfolio increases significantly uh, because of your you know your ability to identify the winners early right and then you are able to churn the money also faster uh, the beauty about startup investment is that my downside risk is just 1x my upside risk can be significantly my upside potential is significantly higher right so at a portfolio level uh, you will you know we'll have a we'll have a fairly fairly high probability uh, of beating other asset class returns uh, the moment you tried you you start doing it persistently right and do it over a period of time you know we are coming to the end of the show you know because we have to let mitesh go uh, but uh, this is the start of many things he is going to come back to bangalore at some point of time and we're going to do something in the studio we are going to pick specific topics on uh, startup investing early stage yep. investing and we are going to go deeper into that right uh, so mitesh so thank you 
uh, that sets the context for this year, guys. Good founders. There's money available. Go pitch. Uh, I think if you're not uh, pitching early, you're losing out. I think there's always somebody who's going to hustle faster than you. But go to market. There's nothing like money in your bank. All of us are doing that. Uh, and and if you're an H and I or if you're a professional who has a lot of money, when I say a lot of money, some money to spare some for startups, you're actually enabling the ecosystem. Check them out and try them out through IPV and other networks. But thank you, Mitesh, for this. Uh, we're going to catch up soon. Thank you so much, Vishal. Thanks for having me. Uh, and and all the best. And I'm going to put it in the description, the FISIS Capital, their angel fund, right? I'm going to put Correct. in all that in the description. If you have questions, ask me. I'll connect them to Mitesh and he can answer them for you guys. Thank you so much, Mitesh. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Bye.